All right, guys, we are here for another episode of which are going to be the best weapons for each class in Frostborn. And instead of doing, last time we did the dagger classes, and now we are going to switch over to the mage classes, which has experienced quite the dramatic change uh, in this update. And we're going to be talking about all that. Let me put the daggers away. Okay, so we've got uh, Wrath Staff, which has been the staple for Frostborn for years. Um, and then they have added a lot of mage staffs. There's more mage staffs than there are um, than there are um, daggers and really a lot of the classes, maybe the bow has more, I'm not sure, as far as highest tier weapons. Um, we've got the Reaper Staff. For those of you who don't know, Reaper Staff is a purple weapon, but it is a very low purple weapon with a DPS of 56, which, you know, you might see another purple weapon and say, that's not that bad of a DPS. It is for the Mage. The Mage um, has always had the Wrath Staff, which has a 65 DPS. Um, one of the, the Mages have had one of the highest DPS uh, as far as their weapons, uh, highest DPS in the game. And so... So we're going to kind of compare everything to the Wrath Staff. I've got Jay on here again, and I've got Ruckus. And we're going to be talking about some of the big changes that they've made. This is probably, uh, some might argue, this is this is the biggest change. The weapon, the new Freya's weapon, in regards to the Mage classes, is to many going to make uh, the biggest difference. So let's go to the zone. All right, we're here in the zone. And uh, right now we're Fire Mage 4, so we do quite a bit of damage. Uh, obviously, you have to build up your stacks. Um, but pretty immediately, we're doing... You can see that with the Wrath Staff, we do a lot of damage. They added, in the, a long time ago, they added the Dragon Combat Staff, um, which has 56 DPS, um, which is pretty low. That's kind of like the Reaper Staff. But... It does reduce cooldowns by 15%, so there's been arguments that the Ice Mage or the um, or the Illusionist or even the Fire Mage, when they're building up stacks, it might be a good weapon to have around. It has a place, but it never really got into where people are using Dragon Staffs, um, you know, a ton. And then they've got the Ice Scythe, which has even lower DPS. It can be a Support Staff or a Combat Staff. But the thing about the ice side that why people some use, sometimes use it is it has, um, it has a pretty good actually. Hold on. Yeah, so it has a pretty good uh, base attack. It's a the base attack is thirty five, which is pretty good for a mage weapon. Um, that recently changed when they added the legendary um, Thor staff. The the Thor staff has thirty eight damage so it kind of replaced the reaper staff still can be good for a support character but if you have a thor staff there's not really much reason to use a ice scythe because not only does it have the same a bigger attack 38 but it's got a dps of 63.3 which is almost as good as the wrath staff then it also has a chain lightning effect which so in team combat it actually does more uh damage uh, yeah, and then, the ice fight does uh thirty percent more damage when, or wait, it does what is it fifteen percent more damage when they're below thirty percent HP? Yes, when they're so it's a great finisher too because you got that yeah. big bulk damage, and then if they're low health, it it can be a good finisher. So people played it a lot. I feel like once people had Thor staffs, I mean, you still see someone with an ice ice scythe, but not not because that's usually because they didn't have a Thor staff. Yeah. Um, but now they've got yeah, a new Thor weapon. It's really good for team PvP for sure. What's that? That Thor staff, the yes. uh, legendary Thor staff, is really good for team PvP with that lightning. It yes. uh, it peaches off of them. Yes, because you're you're doing almost as much damage as the Wrath staff, but then with the splash damage, you're you're hurting everyone, and um, makes it's it's worth the sacrifice. You're doing a lot of damage. Yeah. Um. But they just added a new staff, and this new staff, some argue, are breaking the game of Frostborn. Uh, it's called Freya's Combat Staff, and you can already see 
just from looking at it, you can see a damage of 51. So you've got a, a huge bulk damage with a shot. It's a slow, a slow shooting, but it still has that 63.8 DPS. Um, what would you compare what, it to? Like, how slow does it shoot? Would you like? Is it like the ice height, or a little slower than that? Uh, well, I can tell you exactly. So it it is uh, it is slower than the ice height, um, but not much. It's it's oh, it's no. about like the ice height. Um, it's oh, a wow. and so the ice height is one point four three, and the uh, combat staff is a one point two five. But it does so much more damage than the ice height. Um, with that 51 and the DPS being, you know, almost 50% more. So it's, it is a, or sorry, 25% more. So it is a, uh, a huge thing, but that's not what really breaks this weapon. Okay. So the, that's already a very powerful weapon. Okay. So it doesn't have quite, I mean, it's pretty much the same DPS as the Rastaff, but it's a little lower, but the big change of this weapon is it does 25% more damage to immobilized targets. Oh, so wow. I'm personally excited about the concept of this staff because it's going to make bolas have, like, there's going to be a lot more bola play. Um, and so I'm going to bola this guy real quick, and you'll see I just did 147 damage with one shot, no stacks. Um, no stacks? No stacks. Um, so it really adds up, but where this r gets kind of broken is, um, you know, bull is cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And if you switch, okay, I don't even want to get into the full brokenness yet because it's such a crazy, I'm just going to go to illusionist real quick. If you're illusionist four, which is already becoming a pretty strong class, uh, in solo PVP, um, you got if you bowl of someone and you throw down your clone or you, if you bowl of someone, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. So they're going to have this tendency, especially if they're a melee character to want to dispel and you can bait their dispel without having to use your, their clones. And then your bowl is going to pop back up in 15 seconds. You bowl them again. You know, their dispels on cooldown. You throw your clones down and it's an, it's a game over. Like there's just the illusionist is going to be able to, um, do so much damage and melt people. They've already been able to melt people pretty well um, w when they're able to lock you with their clones. And so now we're talking about a lot more damage. But the big, the big kicker. Sorry, I'm talking so much. But once once we do this, we'll start the discussion part. The big kicker, and I'm I'm sad I don't have a high level ice mage. I have ice mage one. But ice mage, they tried to kind of get the ice mage to come back. Um, this weapon is unbelievable for the ice mage for, um, the main reason that the ice bolt, the frost bolt deals 140% of weapon damage and it can get up to, um, 150% of weapon damage. So let's, we got this little bot here. Perfect timing. I'm going to bolt him and I just did 86 damage with an ice mage one <laughs> wow. on a wow. character with armor. <laughs> so I wish I had ice mage four because I've seen people do the most unbelievable things like almost one shot a tank with this new weapon. And it's because one almost one shot, they couldn't quite one shot, it, but it was a tank. It was like a protector with full, wow. full um, plate gear. And they did this burst and they did 75% of his health with an ice bolt. Yeah, that ice bolt hurts. We, we've run it, we've been running into uh, quite a few uh, Ice Mage 4s. They've definitely, they've definitely made them better. And with this new weapon, it's gonna be crazy. Exactly. So the, if you're an Ice Mage, be, if they don't change this, be prepared to be broken for a while. You will be able to do what the assassin, better than the assassin was able to do. You will one shot a lot of squishies and you'll just literally, if you get them with your ice wall, you just throw the ice bolt and they're dead. 
It, it, if they're a, a squishy like a mage, it's going to be a one-shot kill. Um, and then you've got... Um, and then if they're a tank or a thrasher and they're, they're, you didn't quite kill them and they're trying to give you a fight, you've got bolas and doing that extra damage. Not to mention your ice wall. I think an ice mage 4 refreshes not that it's not doesn't take that long to refresh and right now like melee classes are so op with the with the stun traps you know and uh i've been saying they need to put stun traps on the same cooldown as hammer but someone said that they're they're making it like a second or two second delay to lay the trap this next update which and then with this new weapon it, it could balance things out a little bit well i think it might balance it too far on the on the bad end just because um, I think that the Ice Mage with Dragon Armor and a Berserk Potion will literally one-shot most classes. Oh, wow. And, uh, I mean, I... Yeah, I just did 180 damage. That was to a mob, though. Um, it's hard to say because I have an Ice Mage 1. So yeah. let's, let's look up what an Ice Mage for... Yeah, I can't look it up. I mean, um, a family we've gone against, they had Ice Mage, and they used their bolt, and they're normal gear. We're normal gear, I'm the tank, and their bolt hit me for 40. Keep yeah. I was just with a Rast Staff, right? This is, yeah, was a Rast Staff or a Reaper Staff? Rast or a Rast Thor? Because yeah. it might have been a Thor. Thor is going to be doing a lot more damage. Let's calculate it with the Thor. So if they did 40 damage to you with a, let's say a Thor staff, um, they're going to do 30% more than that. So that's uh, 52 plus 25% more than that. Um, and so that's um, another, I mean, we're talking about 60 to 70 damage. Um which is weird because it should it should be more than that based on the 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 stuff I was seeing. Oh, but that guy had dragon armor on, um, and he kind of set things up. Um, so that makes more sense. Okay, so yeah, I guess your analogy is probably a little more realistic. So let's say they do seventy damage with an ice ball, but that's still pretty crazy. That's a huge burst. Yeah. And he'll also be able to hit you with the weapon, which will be doing quite a bit of damage. So and that recharge time is really fast too. Yeah, it's really fast. It's technically guaranteed slow every time. Um, I'm glad they're reworking Ice Mage, but I think with this upcoming update, you know, and these new weapons, Ice Mage can be yeah OP. Mm -hmm. Because it's also a guaranteed hit. You can't dodge it. If you're out of yes. your range, if you're out of the range, you can. Remember, I dodged that one because I was barely out of the range. Oh, really? Was, yeah, That's I got amazing. a I got a video of where I'm where it barely misses me because I guess the I the mean range was too far. Here's but. the thing: if you, I mean, basically what it's gonna be is if you get hit, um. <laughs> targets on ice path no it still doesn't take wow i didn't even realize that it only does 25 percent more damage to targets on the ice path so you could just use an ice bolt just for fun and you're still going to do a crazy amount of damage oh but the, they the wouldn't ice be a... count as an immobilization or is that a stun well you'd have to bowl of them but i just bullet a, a bullet and um a dragger and hit him with my ice bolt and did a hundred damage. Wow. And that's so, Ice Mage One, right? And I'm Ice Mage One. Yeah, that's that's insane. I did 128 damage, uh, Ice Mage One, no berserk, no uh, mushroom soup, um, to a, a normal mob. So and they and like you said, they can't dodge it. So I just think I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm loving that um, the bandit is going to probably see a lot more play uh, because of the the benefits to immobilization. 
and the increased healing that we're going to see in this update. Um, and the fact that sun traps are going to be very hard to use. They're going to be a second, whole, a whole second harder to use each one. Um, so I like that the bandit's going to get more play. I like that the ice mage is going to get more play. I like that the healer is going to have a little comeback, even though I hope it doesn't go back to where like everyone runs a healer. Um, no one's really been running a healer right now, which is crazy to see. We've been seeing so many teams without a healer. I know it's 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 like Meta has just been shaming all the way. Yeah. And I think that we'll still see some shamans because here's the thing. I mean, thirty percent extra heal also includes your bandages and your food, so. I think some shamans are still going to run that Freya's healing staff, but um, but it's going to make the healer. <laughs> I mean, the healer's going to be able to heal like 400 health, and in, uh, in, in which is crazy, you know, in five seconds. And they can also run their bandages and um, food on top of that, so and it will give the auras on all of that. So I think that, um, you know, I'm not as concerned about this weapon as I was when I, when I, before I got the weapon. I was really worried. I thought this episode I was gonna be like, this is so broken, how could the devs even think this way? Um, but now that I'm playing it, I'm realizing the people that showed me that tank getting three quarter shot I think they like did weakening darts and kind of they did something to dress it up to where it looked like more damage than it was. It that couldn't have been a 400 health protector there, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But still, 70 a shot. I mean, how would that have screwed you over, Jay? If if that ice mage had hit you with 70 instead of 40, it would. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's a that could be a, a game changer. So. But if it's just enough of a game changer to put the ice play ice mage into play, then I'm I'm probably fine with it. As long as it doesn't make it to where it's like, well, all we see is ice mages now. <laughs> yeah, you'd be running a team with three ice mages. <laughs> it's Mox. Alright. Alright, Mox. I thought you were a bot, period. This was a bot zone. All right, well, this is proof that, uh, this is proof that uh, a bot, it can be a bot zone and turn into a real player zone. You know, I think they're coming out with these uh, OP weapons because they're also coming out with the level 10 runes, so. Wait, know, level 10 runes are in this update or is that a future update? I thought it was this update. That's what a lot of people have been saying. Oh my gosh, uh, how did I miss that? Right, Jay? Or is um, it... Yeah, or am I wrong on that? Doing. I don't know. That, that's what I got on as well. But I don't think they should add more levels on runes anyway. Runes yeah. are OP as it is. Like, runes yeah. are here's, super OP. Here's a video of an assassin literally one-tapping somebody. Um, I put it in chat right now. Just one-tap with a shadow step. And he, that guy has runes, yeah, but they're like level three and that's the, or level five is the max, right? Or four. Hold either on. either one of them. It's still, he has runes and if they tend to add more runes, like more levels, it, people with pockets, you know, that have the money for it, it is going to be just destroying everybody. Nobody's going to have a chance. Dude, he does so much damage to him with a fire dagger. All right, I'm going to show this uh, real quick. Screen capture. Uh, all right, turn off the music. Okay, so here we go. We're watching uh, this guy. So is that guy in good armor? It's hard to see with that. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, in, he's in regular mage armor. And he's using a fire dagger? So, yeah, that, that's, oh. also a shaman. that's also a Sorry. shaman. Yeah, I thought you meant the, the guy that was getting hit. No, he's in a D set with the fire dagger. Dragon set. No, I meant the guy who was getting hit. He's in decent armor, too. 
Yeah. No, he's, man. He's, he's in a magician. But, uh, I get Rage it, Armor it, and he's a shaman. He's in a normal set. Uh, normal set, yeah. yeah. Normal set, but he technically has a boss helmet. We're not sure if he has a boss helmet on, but either way, he still has a guaranteed 20% uh, resistance. So, even then, that's still a lot of damage. Like, 20% is helpful, but it's yeah. like the assassin completely ignoring it with that one shot. Because of these, you know, minor runes. Because of runes. That That is very shocking to me that he'd be able to do... To, is that 282 damage? I can't see it. 300 well. and something. Um, he's got 307 HP, it looks like. When I, I go in, it looks like he's got 307 yeah. HP. 307 HP. So, yeah. So... Damage is six over time. Um, so, it's like around 300 damage for sure. Uh, 302. 302 damage. Yeah, he does 302. 302. That's the shadow step. That is insane. And that's just with the fire dagger too. I think the the new dagger would do more than that, right? It would. It probably would, yeah. Because the damage is higher. Well, okay. So what? Basically, this episode is is yeah. What other opinions? I have to go to a meeting, so this episode is going to be a little shorter. But I'm curious. Like, what what are your last thoughts on this? Yeah, basically the the different mages and i mean we it seems like we all agree that the ice mage getting back into play is going to be um is going to be a good thing oh as far as the best weapon so the freya staff obviously is going to be best weapon for the ice mage because it i mean it's kind of a no-brainer the um uh, because it not only does it do crazy damage it works well with all of its stuff but it also um makes its ice pa ice bolt do so much extra damage um so that's a no-brainer in my opinion the Fre the new freya staff is also going to be the best for the illusionist would y'all agree yeah it, it probably would because even then when people are low on supplies like hammers they use bolas eh. And with that, um, with that extra damage with bolas on that staff, it's going to be even better. Yeah, and you can't miss the bola, and I think an illusionist is going to be able to bait some crazy, easy, easy b dispel baiting. Um, illusionist with... is really strong right now, too. I mean, exactly. Everybody's using it, so. The illusionist is strong, and the way to beat the illusionist, I'm not great at it, but the only times I've ever been able to beat the illusionist is to make sure to get his clones on cooldown. So when he pops mm -hmm. his clones, I get away, and then um, when he's when his clones are on cooldown, then I then that's when I push hard on the illusionist, and they're still elusive because they've got that extra dispel. It's, Dude, dispel. Yeah, it's hmm. it's still hard to beat them, but they can be beaten. But a, to be able to bola, so I can't make them miss their hammer, um, and then for them to be, try to taunt my dispel, I'm gonna sit there and be like, "Are you gonna use your clones?" And they could just shoot me. <laughs> like if I'm, you know, um, a melee character, I I'm gonna be like, "Well, I don't want to use my dispel because they haven't used their clones yet." And yeah, that's probably uh, the best all around class right now for PvP. Um, yeah, I I think it's one of the best for solo PvP. Um, yeah. and it's pretty good for team PvP. Okay, so then so it seems like we all agree that's the best uh that's the new best mage weapon for them, but what about fire mage? The fire mage is all about that damage, is giving up that um 1.5 1.2 dps that's not that much you're going from 65 to 63.8 is it worth it to give up that much dps um to have that extra damage immobilization and switch to bolas or should the fire mage still take its normal approach of hammering i say hammering until you bait their dispel and then bola them and and you should be able to melt them pretty pretty fast 
I yeah. mean, you get a bola in and they don't have a dispel, you should be able to kill them. Okay. Yeah. So using using the hammer and the bola, and then you're kind of you you're trying to get that that health down, but then if they you kind of you kind of waiting it out, but if you can, so you would say still use the Freya staff, who sacrifice the damage, or would you say no? I, I don't want to give up any damage as a fire mage. I would have to test out. So say say I bait their dispel and I bola them. What if I what if I fire wave them after the bola? Does that still count as a mobilization? Since it doesn't count as a mobilization. So only the bola is going to give you that plus twenty five percent. But plus twenty five percent is a lot. So it's. It's hard but to if know. If it and stunned, it's, it still wouldn't count at the same time? It, it can be worth. Oh, yeah. I think if it's both, I don't know. Yeah, you'd have to play around with it. Yeah, we'd have to test that out. Because if that's the case, if you could if you could Bola and stun wave at the same time so they can't hammer you back or, you know, or do their, like, say it's a thrasher, they can't do their, their, their skill or whatever, um, it could be pretty good. Yeah. We just go we would have to test that out. Okay. I'm typing in 63.8. So, um the Rastaff only does 2% more damage than the than the Freya's combat staff, but if you're attacking someone who's immobilized, it the Freya staff does 25% more damage. So obviously a lot more than that 2% you're losing. So I would say the Freya staff, I, I, my guess is that it's going to be best even for the Fire Mage. Yeah. Unless you're in team play, and then I would say uh, it's probably better to still go Thor staff. All right. I mean, okay. you got to be careful with Ricky and Solo, because Fire Mage is super squishy still. So. Uh huh. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's true, because you can't just bowl with someone and, and you just can't bowl with anyone and let them attack you back because you you could get, you got to be quick. You gotta... I was wondering if you could bowl a stun wave them and then it would still count as a mobilization, which I'm pretty sure it would because they're still bowling. But we yeah. would have to test it because that, that stun could, you know, knock that out. But, you know, we don't know until we test it further. Okay, guys, well, I, I have to end this episode, but it sounds like the Ice Mage and Illusionist is definitely better to have the Freya Staff. The Fire Mage, we're, we think it's going to be better, but we're not 100% sure yet. The test will come when the update comes out. All right, guys, see you next time.